In the readings today, the one word that jumped out at me was, was wisdom. And I found a few definitions for this. The one definition says that wisdom is the ability or the result of an ability to think and to act utilizing knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. That's a mixture of all those things that we've grown up with over the years. The second one that I saw said that Biblical wisdom is the capacity of the mind that allows us to understand life from God's perspective. There's a slight difference in there. The one is a very human kind of wisdom that we have. And we're all wise in certain ways. Some people are what they call street wise and other people are financially wise and other people are just plain wise, I suppose. But biblical wisdom is an understanding of life from God's perspective. How does God see the things that we are doing, the kind of decisions that we are making? Do they fit in with his plan? Do they fit in with his will? Today's reading is... Um, from 1 Kings, and it's, it's about Solomon, that very well-known story about the two women. Each of them had a child, and, and the one child died during the night, and, and that child's mother swapped the babies around so she could have the living baby, and the other lady, when she woke up, of course, looked at the baby and said, this isn't mine, and they went off to Solomon. And there was a bit of an altercation there between the two of them. And, of course, if it was today, they'd simply run a DNA test. But that kind of technology wasn't available in those days. So Solomon, in his wisdom, said, bring me a sword, we'll cut the baby in half. And, of course, the real mother was horrified and she said just let the other lady have the baby it's fine let, let the baby live the other lady that wasn't the real mother uh, didn't seem to feel any problem with chopping the baby in half and that was credited to Solomon as a hugely wise decision or a wise comment for him to make Solomon, of course, we know, asked God for wisdom. He could have asked God for anything, but he asked for wisdom. But he didn't put it in those words. He said, Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong, or who is able to govern this great people of yours. A discerning heart, a heart that can discern between good and evil, a heart that can discern between right and wrong, a heart that can make decisions based on that discernment, for the best of for the best outcome in, in whatever circumstance. Further in today's readings we get to Acts. And in Acts we read about Paul and the way that he was shipwrecked. Paul was shipwrecked and beaten many times as I've spoken about before. But this particular one he is on his way to Rome. And the captain left the safety of a port um, at a time when, when Paul advised him not to because the weather was turning bad. But they didn't listen to him. They decided that they would be able to make a safer port um, before things got really out of hand. And of course that didn't happen. The ship was tossed about at sea. They were out there for days on end with no 
sign of it letting up. They say that, or in Acts, they say that they didn't even see the sunshine for something like 14 days, I think it was. Terrible storm. Even the sailors were petrified. They started throwing the ship's gear overboard so that they could try and lighten the load. And an angel appeared to, to Paul and said that no one on board that ship will perish. Now this wasn't Paul's own wisdom, it wasn't something from his own um, circumstance that he knew about, it wasn't anything that he could rely on from previous experience or knowledge. It was a word directly from God saying no one on that ship will perish. And because of that, Paul could say to the sailors when they started sensing that they were approaching land and they were taking soundings and they were getting closer and closer, that they were worried they were going to get caught on a sandbar or a reef. And that's in fact what happened. But Paul said to them, you guys haven't eaten. None of us have eaten for days on end. We're all weak. We're all undernourished. Let's have something to eat. God has said that none of us will perish, and I believe him. So eat, get your strength up, because we're going to be facing this challenge now of getting to shore, whichever way we can. So that wisdom that Paul had was a direct input from God. And... I think that we need to try, if we can in our own lives, to get a mix of that kind of thing. We need to be asking God to direct us. He may not send an angel to stand in front of us and tell us exactly what's going to happen. But we need to have that kind of relationship with God that we can understand the direction when it actually comes. That we can understand that it is from Him when we get that direction. In Proverbs it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, let's not be fools. Let's not despise wisdom and let's not turn our nose up at instruction. In um, Proverbs, you also say that we must study his words prayerfully and desire to understand life from God's perspective. We need to look at the promises of God the one promise that Jesus made to us was, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Jesus said, I'll be with you always. So to get wisdom, we need to fear God. But fear here means a kind of filial fear. It's the kind of respect and love that a child has for a parent. It's a fear of offending the one that we most adore and trust. Not the kind of fear that a prisoner feels for his jailer or his executioner or his cellmate or his fellow prisoners, as would be the case in many jails around the world, where I think the prisoners themselves are more threatening than what even the jailers are. So we need to get to know God as intimately as we can. We get to know God as intimately as we know our parents or our partner, our spouse, our friends. And we can only do that by constantly communicating with him. 
If we stop communicating totally with those around us, we will very soon not understand them anymore. Our, our relationship will very soon erode and go down the tubes. We need to stay in contact with God through prayer, through meditation, through reading the scriptures. When you communicate, of course, it's not just that we talk and talk and talk and then say goodbye. That's our communication for today. We actually need to try and get feedback and listen more than what we speak. It's something that is not the easiest thing in the world to do. But something that we need to try and train ourselves to do through, as I said, meditation and reading the scriptures. James in chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. We need to prayerfully request assistance from God. We need to cultivate that relationship. We need to teach ourselves to hear and once we've heard, to do. And I'll just leave that with you today as we go into our regular morning prayer. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins and to seek His grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. God feeds his people with the bread of life. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> so in a moment of silence, we just call to mind the things that we've done or haven't done, things that may have put a wedge between God and ourselves, things that may have been something that upset our neighbours in some way, things that may be upset our loved ones in some way. We just pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn out our Psalms for today, and that's Psalm 61 and Psalm 62. Hear my loud crying, O God, 
and give heed to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart faints. They have set me on a rock that is higher than I, where you have been my refuge and my strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever and find shelter in the covering of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God, you have granted the desire of those that fear your name. You will give the king long life, and his years shall endure through many generations. He shall dwell before God forever. Loving kindness and truth shall be his God. So will I ever sing praises to your name while I daily perform my vows. My soul waits in silence for God, for from him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my strong tower, so that I shall never be moved. How long will you all plot against a man to destroy him, as though he were a leaning fence or a buckling wall? Their design is to thrust him from the height, from his height, and to their delight in his in lies. They bless their lips, they bless with their lips, but in, inwardly they curse. Nevertheless, my soul wait is in silence for God. For from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my strong tower so that I shall not be moved. In God is my deliverance and my glory. God is my strong rock and my shelter. Trust in him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. The children of men are but breath. The children of men are a lie. Place them in the scales and they will fly upward. They are as light as air. Put no trust in extortion. Do not grow worthless by robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice I heard him say, that power belongs to God that to the Lord belongs a constant goodness for your reward, for you reward a man according to his works. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We turn now to our first scripture reading, which is from 1 Kings, uh, chapter 3. From verse 16. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, My lord, this woman and I live in the same house. I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put the dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son, the dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, No, the dead one is yours and the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, This one says my son is alive and your son is dead, while the other one says, No, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was filled with compassion for her son and said to the king, Please, my lord, give it to the living, give her the living baby, don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him, cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman, do not kill him. 
she is his mother. When all Israel heard the, th the verdict that the king had given, they held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. Here ends our first lesson. We throw together now the song of Zechariah. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of your sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We turn now to our second lesson, which is from Acts. Acts chapter 27 from verse 27. On the 14th night we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it fall away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, we have, not, we have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. We haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a, a single hair from your head. After he said this, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to the land, and the rest were to get there on planks or pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached the, the, the land in safety. Here ends our second lesson. We say together the song of the church. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, 
cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth full are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought to the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. <clears throat> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints of forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing. To your church, Lord, give holiness. To the world, give peace. To this nation, justice. And to all people, the knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families. Protect the weak. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our colleagues for today. God of our holy and righteous ancestors, accept us as a living sacrifice and transform us by your Spirit, that being members of one body, we will offer our gifts in Christ's service, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, you have safely brought us to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
we just take a little time to pray for anyone that we know that is in trouble in some way or that is ill or recovering. We just pray for Goldie Stevens who has had a hip replacement. We pray that she would recover quickly and fully. We also bring Irene Turpin to you Lord today and she awaits the results of tests and to see if she's possibly can get a liver transplant that would be a life changing situation for her. We pray for all of our parishioners who are lonely, who are housebound, those who are elderly and and suffering from being alone and older. We just ask you, Lord, to give them comfort. We pray for all of our friends that we know that need help and guidance, those who are depressed, those who are pregnant, those who are simply tired. We pray, Lord, that you would help them, guide them, revive them, make them feel loved. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.